Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty, I wonder why. It's the sign. Please note, dog walking park is closed until further notice. Hmm. Okay, to the fountain. I guess there's no point messing mm. around. We've just got a scene of Shanti. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. Something fishy's going on here. That's her. I recognize her from my building. Nishanti Sharma, was it? This is gonna be awkward. Alright. Hello, lady. Uh, excuse? I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. Oh well, yeah, she is kind of playing a song. All right, here I go. Um, um, uh, no. <laughs> okay, that didn't go so well. I just need to work myself up to it. Okay. Uh, oh, doggy's following me. Hello. I don't think so. Hello, dog. I'm not untying the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. Yeah, but if we run away with it, who's gonna know? <laughs> Wait, is that? No, that's just an exit. Oh. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh. Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. <laughs> Beginner's luck, I guess. Was I supposed there. to do that? All better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you. The lady next door. Yeah. Hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No. Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. Ah. Uh, nah, it's okay. You got a cute pup. That's a cute dog you've got. <laughs> that face. The face of sincerity. He just? Normally he behaves, but he seems to have taken a shine to you. Oh, great. Anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um. Yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, that's the problem, see? He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Where's the dog's Let's leash gone? Thanks. And again, is leash is just gone. Mm. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just need to get home. All right. Let's keep walking. I guess she's one of these really easy dog walkers. Like that dog is whipped. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rosangela. She lives here. He does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. Yeah, thanks for being a jackass. There's no point getting on his bad side, though. Oh, it was no problem at all. Do you want anything else? Milk or orange juice, perhaps? Um... Never mind. Just get out of my way. Okay, I guess there was no choice. <laughs> well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps... But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors, after all. Yeah, I guess. Looks like somebody is hungry. That dog straight up knocked on the door. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Um, let's let's be. Come on, be polite to her. She's I'll think nice. About it. No thinking needed. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Thanks for pointing that out, ma'am. Oh, I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes, um, their names are me, myself, and I. That face again. <laughs> um, it's a joke. Yeah, I get it. Very funny. <laughs> I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. 
Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rose Angela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa, if you like. Rose Angela is kind of a mouthful, you know. All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. Thank you, miss. I didn't mean to be so hostile what towards a you. Strange lady. Ooh. Home. Thank God. What a place you have. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Uh, okay. Ugh. To the phone then, I guess. Hello? This is Dr. Quentin from Bellevue Hospital. Yes. I was, I was your aunt's primary care physician. Did you receive my letter? Yes, I received it. I haven't had the time to come by, though. That's all right. I'm sure you're busy. However, should you find the time today, my entire schedule is free. Is free. I... sure. I I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Good day. If I don't visit him, he's just going to keep bothering me. I suppose I should just get it over with. All right. Is there anything that we can do while we're here, though, or did we literally just come here to go back out again? I know these plants are fake. Okay, I guess we're done here. Don't tell me this. What's going on here? This is creepy. Ah. Locked. Whatever's back there, I can't get to it. You know, the lights flickering and everything is normally a dead giveaway that you do that you're going to someplace pretty dodgy, but the music's fine, so uh What's with the lights? Hey, old buildings, you know. Always got problems. If the plumbing ain't broken, the lights are on the blink. It's giving me a headache, let me tell you. Okay, let's just go to the doctor. I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay. Oh crap, Looks I forgot legit. to read the letter. Go right in. His name's on the door, you can't miss it. Thanks. Right. Uh... I guess... wait, do, do we still have it? Come in. Not that I can check, Damn Dr. It. Quentin? Yes? I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in, come in. You got my letter, I trust? Yes, I did. Good, good. My, my condolences on the loss of your mother. Thanks. My aunt is at peace now, wherever she is. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, yes I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? Gotta be honest with you, I'm alright. I'm fine. That's good to hear. You received the ashes? Yes, I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. Like a hole in the head. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, let's just be nice. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel. It's not like I knew her, or even remember her from before. She's like a stranger. So why did you make it a point, point of visiting her all those years? Uh, well, you know, you, where family is concerned, you gotta do what you gotta do. Am I right? Or maybe it was a habit. Nah, let's be nice. She was the only family I had. I guess I felt an obligation, like I had to. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead, life goes on. Jeez. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Keep writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them because they were more interested in you. What? Wh why? That's really creepy, Dr. Quinn. Yeah, it kind of is. Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we, shall we say, a less, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. 
It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case. And now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. Wait, what? what? What's our condition? Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Ye yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes, Patricia, I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it. There was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with the family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come in to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family family history more carefully. I do apologize. I just assumed... Well, never mind. It doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent her and hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No. I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. Uh, speak to me about my grandmother first, because I've got a feeling that might go if I don't click it. So, I had a grandmother. Well done. Apparently Everybody so. does. How do you know about her? It was in your aunt's case history when she was brought to us. Patricia Blackwell's symptom symptoms were the same, word for word. Patricia's case was severe, and she, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. No abnormality. Um... Should I ask about the auntie's condition, or...? Now, tell me if there are any links first between the two. You couldn't find any other link between the two cases. None, aside from the family family connection. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too, would cry out that name on occasion. Joey? Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. I think I know who Joey is. Okay, let's ask about the future this time. So what should I do? Right now, nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware is all. And come talk to me if, well, there's any concern. You never could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me. I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I. But fascinating? It might come as a surprise to you, but yeah, yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. She'd sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well... As you know, she wasn't exactly cuddly catatonic. We kept, we kept her sedated. Right. She had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that... We had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to Auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. If Auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time. But I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her, nat her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did Auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? 
It's it's difficult Don't to say. Don't say it's say, headaches. But it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open. She thrashed. Her screams. Well, we had to gag her eventually. My God. I know. Did she still feel it when she was sedated? We don't, we don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. So if we were five when she went into, uh, into here, and she's been in there 25 years, I guess that makes us 30, and if they're getting younger and younger when they're getting, you know, when they're having this mental collapse, whatever, then we're next, and it's soon. Is there anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, you're the beneficiary. It's just a folder, some documents and so on. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh, well, thanks for that. It's no problem at all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now, so feel free to drop in any time. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure. Thank you.